Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about Subaru versus Mazda. Who makes the better vehicles? Now anyone who's been watching me for any length of time knows I'm not a fan of either Subaru or Mazda. But I've been a mechanic for 51 years and I work on both models. And truthfully that's the reason <laughs> that I don't like either of them. I work on too many of them. They break down quite a bit. But I'm going to break it down. If you're thinking about buying a Subaru or a Mazda, which one should you buy? Now of course both companies make a whole range of vehicles. Take Mazda sports car, the little Miata. It's a cute little English style sports car. Where Subaru has that BRZ that's more a Japanese drifter car. They're different types of sports cars. The Miata has proven itself to be a cute, reliable, fun car to drive around in. It can last for years and years. The Subaru BRZ Hey, it's uh, you put a turbo on it, it's a pretty fast little car. But those are more niche cars, sports cars. I'm talking about the overall Subaru versus Mazda. Just plain old regular cars. Or of course, the most popular thing, SUVs. Most people these days give the Mazdas, especially the SUVs, higher grades than the Subaru. But, take 2018 in the United States, Subaru sold over 600,000 vehicles and Mazda only sold a little over 300,000 vehicles. What's behind that? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's two reasons. There's brand loyalty and there's all-wheel drive. Now, every vehicle Subaru makes is all-wheel drive except for the BRZ. So, all their cars come in all-wheel drive. So, people that want all-wheel drive, especially people who live in very snowy areas, they're going to gravitate towards buying Subarus who's been making them for decades. Now here in Texas where it snows maybe once every five years, at least in Houston, Subarus are not that popular. I remember when I moved down here from up north, I was used to seeing Subarus up north and I hardly saw any down here. So you get a whole bunch of people that live in snowy climates. Maybe they live out in the country where there's dirt, muddy roads. The all wheel drive is gonna come in real handy. I see people who buy Subarus and they keep buying Subarus. They like the all wheel drive system. Subaru's been made making them so long that their all-wheel drive systems are pretty bulletproof. They're one of the best in the market. So as far as I'm concerned, that's something that's driving their sales. They only come with all-wheel drive. So you don't have to make a decision, gee, should I get a Mazda two-wheel drive or a Mazda four-wheel drive? With Subaru, unless you get in the BRZ sports car, they are all all-wheel drive. But when it comes to quality, in 2018, Mazda was listed as 22nd in initial quality, and Subaru was listed as 28. So like I said, I'm not a fan of either. 22 and 28 out of all the manufacturers, it's not one of my picks. But in that same year, Consumer Reports said that Mazda was third in overall reliability, and Subaru was fourth. Now to give a real world vehicle versus vehicle comparison, I'm gonna choose the Mazda CX-5 versus the Subaru Forester. Now if you like technology, you're gonna pick the Mazda. The new 2.5 liter one can shut off half the cylinders to get better gas mileage when you're cruising. It's called cylinder deactivation, and really I'm not into any of that stuff. It's been proven that the cylinder deactivation systems often lead to more wear on the engine, Many of them start burning oil because when you shut off the engine on some of the cylinders, it starts wearing them more and they just end up burning oil as they age. Now when it comes to horsepower, the Subaru, less horsepower than the Mazda. Subaru is still using those boxer engines. It's an old design. I mean, Volkswagen, the old Beetles are boxer designs. It's just an old design. And they can talk all they want about changes, but they have a tendency to blow head gaskets. You don't see in a normal four-cylinder inline engine like Mazda's using. Now, in terms of transmissions, if you're getting an automatic transmission in either the Mazda or the Subaru, they're both relatively weak units. And why is Scotty not surprised that they're weak? They're both using Jatco transmissions. They're Jatco transmissions designs. That's the company that Nissan owns a bunch of. They're not the greatest transmissions in the world, but man, since Renault took over Nissan, they sure market the heck out of them. They sell them all over the world. Kind of like McDonald's hamburgers. Not the greatest tasting hamburgers, not the hamburgers that are best for you, but they sell the heck out of them. Now, going back to my comparison of the Mazda CX-5 and the Subaru Forester, overall, the Mazda handles much better. It's a much better suspension system than the Subaru Forester does. The Mazda handles better, it gets better gas mileage, and it can even tow 500 pounds more than the Subaru can. And over the course of time, 
I've seen many head gasket failures in Foresters. I've seen catalytic converter failures. And I haven't seen neither in the Mazdas. So although I personally wouldn't buy either model, if you were picking between the two, I would go Mazda over the Subaru. Mazda also offers four-wheel drive in their CX-5 too. You can get all-wheel drive in them. If you're thinking about buying a Subaru or a Mazda, you know what you're looking at. And take my advice. Go road test them both at a dealer. You'll find that the Mazda handles better, and in the long run, it'll outlast the Subaru. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.